There's some smooth operators around here, and I thought my 50 peso sunglasses were cool. Anyway, I'm Paul, an English guy, showing you Mexico through my eyes, and I'm in the Roma Norte area of Mexico City. Now, it's not the richest part of the city, but it is one of the hippest, full of trendy, well-off Mexicans. Lots of foreigners, many from the US, also enjoy this gentrified area full of late 19th and early 20th century mansions converted into fine dining establishments with million dollar brunches. In fact, even unremarkable apartment buildings built in the last 60 years, like the one behind me here, are also being transformed into swanky businesses with mega rents to match. And of course, today I'm going to talk about how the gentrification of some neighborhoods in Mexico City and in other parts of Mexico too, are creating tensions between some Mexican locals and foreigners. And this is what's going on. The COVID pandemic has meant many more people are now working remotely. Home office is a big thing now, right? And Mexico is receiving a massive influx of remote workers, mostly from the United States, who continue to work full time for their companies, earning all those dollars whilst temporarily living in neighborhoods like this one, which are more or less on the same time zone as their US offices. Very convenient. And in the last few years, more and more people are realizing that Mexico can be a very attractive place to spend some time and save money because of the cheaper prices. Now, these fashionable areas in Mexico have always been popular with foreigners without rocking the boat too much with the locals. But all this new greenback purchasing power is creating a new wave of gentrification, pushing up the prices, such as in the property rental market, making life difficult for frustrated locals. Now, there's something important to remember. This gentrification issue by remote workers is only happening in a small number of areas relative to Mexico City's and Mexico's vast size. But the Mexican mass media, like Publimetro, are writing about the growing problem. And by the way, the photographer managed to find Thor catching up on his work emails from Mexico City. But jokes aside, the fact that the mass media here are reporting the problem shows that it is in the public interest for Mexicans because, well, it's not fair. And let's look at the facts. According to this website, Mexico has two locations, Mexico City and Playa del Carmen, that are in the top 10 fastest growing remote working hubs anywhere in the world. And honestly, many places in Mexico are popular with remote workers and also with digital nomads. Now, digital nomads are different to remote workers. They are doing freelance work on their laptops. Often, they place a nice lifestyle over earning the megabucks. And Mexico Mexico has had them for years and just like with many foreign retirees in Mexico they haven't rocked the boat too much with the locals especially as they do bring in money and business so what's changed since the pandemic well as I said before many full-time office workers from the US in high-paying so-called knowledge worker jobs such as in the tech sector can now work remotely and many of them have come to Mexico to do their home office and these people earn way more more than your average digital nomad freelancer. We're talking about $100,000 a year for your average US tech employee. Now, some people will earn less than that. Others will earn even more, but it's serious cash. And all these people, for example, in the property rental market are blowing everyone else out of the market with their dollars. And not long ago, there was a big story scandal about a lady from the US with a high level full time US job. And she tweeted this with a photo of a rustic yet luxurious apartment. Her tweet went viral, not in the way she hoped, with Mexicans on social media telling her to leave. One reply from a Mexican was, the wages here are much lower in Mexico. You kick us out of our homes and neighborhoods where our life is. So yes, there is tension. And in the next section, I'm going to look at more of the negative effects of this new wave of gentrification. Oh yes, 
I'm meeting some Alambre tacos here, and I needed a break filming in those hipster streets. Not my scene. And this street stand, it's a little bit famous, you know, and it has the best name ever, the Flying Cat. Just brilliant. So now let's look at some effects of this new wave of gentrification in fashionable neighborhoods like here in Roma Norte in Mexico City. Now these areas are full of young professional Mexicans in good jobs, renting apartments so that they can enjoy the trendy lifestyle. And although they earn good money for Mexico, they aren't happy that their rental costs are going up and up because dollar earning full-time US employees have moved in. And yes, that sucks for them. But the situation is deeper than that because a social group with less money is also being affected because many working class people have for decades relied on the status quo for the success of their small business and many of them are now being forced out. For example, behind me here is a grey building and in the last few years it's been totally renovated. This is what it looked like before. And one working class family used to operate a torta shop, an epic kind of Mexican sandwich from the ground floor here. And they were evicted this year against their will after decades of feeding the locals. And Mexican journalists say the likely reason for this aggressive redevelopment and evictions is the skyrocketing demand for rental properties and commercial spaces in the area. And the building now seems pretty much ready and no doubt they'll fill it with people who will pay a lot more more than the less well-off local people who once lived there. Also, you just know richer people with money to invest will snap up many of these apartments if they haven't already and straight away put them up on Airbnb, which is a hot market in the area. And yes, many local residents are being displaced in this way because these expensive and trendy neighborhoods still have pockets of working class people living in older, poorly maintained buildings that haven't been redeveloped in a long time, paying relatively low rents. And these people who are still living there feel angry and vulnerable because property developers seeking future riches are actively targeting buildings or just the land to redevelop into fancy boutique apartments. Anyway, you get the picture. You can clearly see that everything I'm explaining right now is a textbook example of gentrification in action. And to finish, let's talk about this tension brewing between locals and full-time remote workers. And yes, there is bad energy in the air. For example, there are reports of posters being put up with this message. Allegedly, this is one of the posters that was found in the Roma Norte neighborhood, where I am now. On social media, you also see complaints about English-speaking foreigners in these neighborhoods being disrespectful by saying how everything is so cheap. And that's just rubbing salt into the wounds for locals here, because Mexico isn't cheap for Mexicans earning in pesos, especially with rising inflation. And yes, the ones who are being disrespectful do need to start being sensitive to the issue. And I'll end on this. Remember, Mexicans will always be welcoming to foreigners. The Mexican hospitality is legendary. It's an amazing part of the national identity. But this growing gentrification problem from all these remote workers with fists full of dollars negatively affecting local Mexicans is leaving people frustrated and angry. Changing subject from today's video, una camioneta gris. Okay, okay, it does have a bit of green in there, but it still reminds me of the song from the amazing Los Tigres del Norte. I went to see them in concert the other month. They are awesome. Anyway, I hope this video was interesting for you. Like, share it, comment, and I have a feeling people will have something to say about this topic. And if this is your first time here, why not watch some more by clicking on one of my videos on the screen there and subscribe. Swine Paul, this is True Mexico. Hasta luego.